Just the facts, ma'am. Hey, y'all. This video is about Cyta cordifolia, otherwise known as country mallow or bala. I grew this herb for the first time this year, and when I looked online for information on how to grow it, I really could not come across much. Certainly, I didn't find any grow guides. So I'm putting this video together to share what I did learn and the experiences that I had in case you plan to grow it yourself. In this video, we're going to be covering common medicinal uses very briefly, germination, plant care and growing, flowering and seed production, and harvesting. Now I should state that I am not an herbalist. When I take an interest in growing a medicinal plant, I start looking up clinical studies as I've, I don't put as much stock into folklore or historical uses. So if you see any documents on screen, you'll be able to find the link to the whole research paper down in the description. Some of the most widely studied effects from the plant include uh, the fact it is an anti-inflammatory, it is a mild painkiller, it does lower blood sugar, I'm growing it specifically for its effects as a bronchodilator because it does contain ephedrine and pseudoephedrine. I do have asthma and there are very few plants that you can grow that do have an ephedrine content. Um, of course, ephedra sinica is widely known and that has a much higher rate of ephedrine. I believe cytocortifolia, we're looking at less than 1%, but because it does have some other chemicals that are useful for breathing disorders, that helps balance out the low ephedrine content. I am growing Ephedra sinica. I started that as well this year. However, that little plant, is, it's very small and it's going to be at least two to three years before I could even think of harvesting. Whereas Cytocortifolia, I started it this spring and I will be harvesting it this fall. It is also worth noting that there are no native plants in the continental U.S. that contain ephedrine. A lot of people mistakenly believe that uh, Ephedra nevidensis, otherwise known as Mormon tea, contains it, and it does not. There are also two or three natural wild cider varieties in the U.S., and they don't contain it either. So moving on to purchasing seeds, there are a few websites online that do sell seeds. I purchased mine on eBay. Um, ideally, you want to get seeds that came from plants originally from India. The reason being, Cytocortifolia has been used medicinally in India for thousands of years, and I've read, I can't confirm it, but I've read that they have been breeding it selectively to some extent to improve the medicinal qualities. Now one thing to note, make sure you buy from a U.S. based seller. If you see seeds offered from foreign countries, pass them by. It's actually legal to buy seeds from foreign countries and import them into the U.S. unless you have a permit. And there are a lot of seed vendors do sell them, especially on places like eBay. Usually you get away with it, but the ag department does look at that and they do hunt people down if, they, if they've if they got time or if they see that you imported something that they think might be an invasive species. So um, be cautious about that. So I ordered my seeds off eBay from a seller in Florida that told me that they were originally from Indian stock. And um, I ended up with about 100 seeds, and I germinated them, germinated them in two batches. The first batch of 50, I soaked the seeds, put them on top of a uh, starting mix indoors and under a grow light, and I kept misting them daily. And after about 7 to 10 days, I finally had three seeds sprout, which is pretty typical because these seeds are notoriously hard to germinate. So the second batch of 50, I decided to take a slightly more scientific approach, and I found this research paper that talked about the use of uh, temperature. On that batch, I scarified them lightly with sandpaper, then I soaked them for a few hours, wrapped them up, put them in the refrigerator for 12 hours, then took them out and put them in a 175 degree oven for about 10 hours. After that, I made a crucial mistake, which I will not repeat. I actually put them in a Ziploc bag with a damp paper towel to germinate. And four or five days went by and it looked like at least half of them were germinating and I was very excited. However, two days later the bag got hit with mold and 
virtually, it basically killed all the germinating seeds. I saved what I could. I put them on top of a uh, starting mix to try to germinate them, but I think I did get a couple plants to germinate, but it was like six to eight weeks later. So obviously all the ones that had been germinating were killed by the mold, and then the ones that were late germinators managed to survive that. So next year I do plan to use the uh, the cold, hot treatment again, but I'm not going to use a baggie. I'm just going to keep them on uh, starting mix under a grow light. I also did use a heat lamp to keep the, the seeds about 80 degrees both times I did it. Just to, it's, from, it's a tropical plant, so it likes the warmer temperatures. And please note, this is considered an invasive weed in many areas. Do start your seeds inside, and when you move them outside, if you're going to, have a way to contain it. I have got at least, I pulled at least 200 wild cider weeds out of my yard this year. Um, it, it grows rampant. And in some areas, it is really causing some environmental damage. Australia had a huge problem because it was taking over their pasture lands, and it is toxic for some livestock. So be careful. Don't let your seeds get out of control. And these are my plants. I think there's two or three in that pot as of the end of July. I did move them outside into a pot after um, our, our last frost date, which is April. I put a, a tomato cage over it and then I covered it in tool netting to prevent the seeds from moving. And I'm also keeping it on my lawn. That way if a couple of seeds did drop, the plants would be mowed down by the lawnmower before they would ever have a chance to uh, grow and flower. And this plant is doing really, really well. It is currently about 44 inches tall or 113 centimeters. I believe the max height for Cytocortifolia is 200 centimeters. But I'm guessing um, that, that those are plants that are grown as perennials and they're probably several years old or at least older than what this plant is. This plant's only, what, five months old? It is very easy to keep. Um, it's very tolerant. I'm not real good about watering it on time and yet it has never wilted. It, uh, I did give it a little bit of fertilizer and I should do that more often because it does promote leaf growth, which of course a lot of the uh, the herbal components are going to be in the leaves, so you want lots of leaf growth. It got blossoms up and down the little stems starting around, I think, the middle of June. And each little blossom left a little seed pod, which you can see some of the little seed pods are still left on the plant. I took the rest of them off a little while ago. And it stopped blooming around the middle of July. So all the flowers are gone at this point. Now the seed pods stay attached to the plant which is very helpful as far as preventing it from growing wild. Um, I believe they're, they're not prickly, but the, the little seed pod design is intended to catch on gently to a passing animal or person, attaches to fur or clothing, and then travels along and drops off as a way of propagating itself. So as long as I have netting around it, I'm not too worried about the seeds. They're not going to blow away. Another nice thing is the wild cider has just started to bloom in the yard, um, and that's starting after that this one has already stopped, so I don't have to worry about cross-pollination. It does like full sun. It will grow in partial shade, but if you're growing it for its medicinal benefits, full sun is definitely better, and it is very heat tolerant. Um, we frequently get temps in the mid-90s here in the afternoon, and my other heat-loving plants like the tobacco and the peppers they all start to wilt when it gets that hot, but the site has been fine. It hasn't wilted at all, even on, on our hottest days. As far as pests, I have not noticed any. The leaves are not at all chewed, but of course it does have a net around it. I'll say the little um, black ants just love this plant. They're always going up and down it. Now the wild cider in the vegetable garden that of course isn't protected by netting, some of its leaves have been nibbled by something. I mean, certainly not enough to really damage the plant. Obviously, some things do like to eat it, but it's not particularly susceptible to any kind of pests that I've seen. So moving on to seed collection, these are the seeds that I harvested off the uh, couple of plants in the pot, and I'm very pleased with the amount of seeds I got. Price-wise, at least what I saw, Cytocortifolia seeds are often sold in little packs of 30 or 50 for 8 or 10 or 15 dollars. And if I had to guess, there's probably 400 seeds in that little bag from this year's plant. So I'm very happy. 
And as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to be harvesting this plant in October, which uh, we do get a frost or hard freeze at the end of October, at which point the plant is going to die anyways. In warmer climates where you don't get a winter freeze, it will grow through the winter and it'll grow for several years. But that's not the case here. The studies I've looked at stated that growing the plant in full sun and harvesting at the eight month mark is ideal for the uh, ephedrine level. And that works out perfectly for this growing season since the plant was started indoors in February and it'll be eight months in October and that is right around the time that I would have to harvest to uh, prevent it from being killed in a freeze. And when I harvest the plant, my plan at this point is simply to grind up the entire plant fresh and tincture it in uh, standard 80 proof alcohol like vodka. I did try to research better extraction methods. I really could not find much. I know some of the herbal sites say, well, just, you know, tincture the roots. Well, if you look at the data, a lot of the um, phytochemicals are actually in the leaves and in the stem. And I definitely want all of that. I also know if you dry it, then you could be losing some of the essential oils. Um, so I, I just, I'm going to play it safe and, and grind it up fresh and tincture it right away. And that pretty much wraps up everything I've learned about this plant over the last few months. And as mentioned before, if you want to read any of the full studies or documents that were shown in this video, just go down to the links section to pull them up. If you have used Cytocortifolia or grown it, I would love to hear about it in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching this video, and stay safe.